Guys and dolls, my name is Spencer Jackson, and I'm going to introduce to you tonight the infamous envelope follower from the infamous plugin suite. So let's go to the right page. And yeah. So here we see the plugin in question, this infamous envelope follower, and I have it hooked up to my guitar here, which I also have hooked up to Tarix plugin, all hooked up in Carla here, and we're gonna play with it a little bit and see what it does. So here you see the envelope follower following the envelope of the guitar notes I play. So that'll be confusing. Okay. So if you watch the green line, as I get louder, it goes up. With some. So first let's talk about the speed you put on the input. Let me change some things. I'll we'll leave that there. Bring this up. Okay, so the speed, first you have envelope type, peak and RMS. Really this is just an averaging. RMS is going to, hope we're not clipping. RMS is basically just an averaging. Uh, peak means it stays on the peaks of the signal. It's a little bit faster. Um, attack, you're setting here the um, time constant of a first order filter. So you see if attack is very high, very long time, it's measured in seconds because it's a time constant. So if attack is very long, even though I play a hard note, it takes it quite a while to rise up. Uh, whereas if I make attack very short, it goes up almost instantly. Um, same with decay on the other end. If I make it very long, then it'll stay up a long time. Whereas if I make decay very short, it will go down almost instantly. So there you have it. So you could use this just to visualize waveforms, but that's not really the purpose and it's kind of a weird way to use it. So after this filtering section, you have the input and you can see what the value of your signal is. So there you see this LED. And corresponding with that value, you see here the history in your blue line, blue and blue. See what I did there? Pretty clever, eh? Um, and then from there, what you have is this section, which bridges the input and output, and it basically will scale your signal. So if I put the saturation point way up at the top, that means our signal here needs to get all the way up there before it stops increasing in value. It kind of hits a roof. So you right now with the saturation at one to one basically this is a one to one mapping so the green line is actually covering the blue line um, whereas if i bring the saturation down basically that means that our signal even though it's small is getting closer to the saturation point and so that makes that green line go up closer to the maximum value so similarly we can like raise the minimum value which brings that the lowest point that the output will go to so and we can also lower the maximum value to kind of clip that down so there you see I clipped there and it's cutting off the peaks if I make it more extreme lower the saturation so that it's even bigger So there, without touching the attack or decay times, um, you know, we're clipping the signal. So basically, this just gives you control over the MIDI output. Um, and you can see here, the green is telling you what the current MIDI output value is. Um, and here you can see the history. It's green and green. Ha ha ha. Anyway, and over here on the left, you have kind of some markers of where your min and max are, blue and green. And uh, so... 
put them back to where they were. You also have a reverse function, which basically makes it so that um, when this is zero, this is the maximum value. And so there you can play with it. So you can actually, uh, if you want to see kind of where it is, you can just play with this and it'll bounce between the two. And anyway, so now with Um, so there you can see the different notes. Um, so this is all good and well, but what can we do with this? Well, one thing, you could use it to build your own compressor by hooking the MIDI output to a gain plugin. Um, that's cool, but we already have compressors. Uh, you could, you know, use it as a side chaining compressor to pump the gain of uh, plug in in another channel, but we already have sidechain compressors. So why did I bother making this is your question. And the answer is so that you can modulate or change the value of things that are entirely unrelated to volume. So let's dig right into our example. Here I have a chorus. Uh, we're going to have to change our routing a little bit. You can see our rat's nest here. Um, I can clean it up a little bit. So right now this is bypassed and we need to unpass it. So let's take that out. So now we've put it in our loop before our amp. And without any MIDI stuff... <laughs> So there you hear the chorus effect. So what one thing we can do is set the envelope follower to change this feed forward, which basically is a wet and dry. So, so now you see it's moving as I play guitar. There it clipped for a little bit. I mean, clipping wasn't actually clipping the audio signal, but it's reaching a saturation. So even though the signal is much louder, it stays at that same volume or same value. So, and this is actually where it's kind of nice. So say you want the feed forward not to go any higher than some value, you can turn on the reverse and uh, bring it down to that value you want it to peak at, and then Turn it back off just for reference. So my guitar signal is entirely uncompressed. It's going into the envelope follower completely direct in um, dry. And so as a result, when I play chords, it makes a much bigger signal over here than when I play single notes. Um, which affords us an opportunity to tune it to two different, very different signals. So for the chords, right now it's hitting saturation and maybe I want it to, you know, either not saturate or to decay a little sooner. So, or more quickly. So if I lower the saturation point, it actually is gonna stay there are more. So you get more of the chorus effect, more time with the chorus effect before it starts dropping down. And if we lower our decay time constant, then it'll drop off pretty quick. We can go, we can go way down. So uh, You can see it kind of wavering there um, because you know, the signals got some. I think I have two pickups. I have some out of phase pickups going down. Um, anyway, if we raise our saturation point, now we don't quite get enough of the chorus effect. So we can raise our maximum or we can, well, lowering the. 
lowering the saturation probably makes the most sense. Or, or so say you don't want it to sit there at 0.5, you want it to just barely touch it and go down. So one option is to lower the decay time like we did. And so we raise the saturation a little bit so that it doesn't clip the top off and stay at that value for so long. Um, just for comparison, here's the... So you see there it clipped at the top. The blue line's the same because our input was about the same, but the output you get this more plateaued look. Um, so you can really play with the, the envelope. You can play with the dynamic part of this effect that we have implemented using our envelope follower. Um, so and now let's tune it for single notes. Um, so we need our saturation to be a little lower. Let's get some more signal. So that's okay, but actually having the effect during the loudest part of the note maybe makes it not the most noticeable. So what we can do is reverse it so that the chorus effect actually is going to fade in is what it is. So right now when there's silence, the chorus effect is fully on, but as soon as we make some noise, it goes to zero, you can see here. So if I make a large chord, it really saturates, which goes to zero. So it, it inverts this signal. So you see down here, it's saturated at zero. And we can change that saturation point, you know, by changing the minimum. But this is what we want for now. So now if I play an individual note, as the note progresses, it gets more chorus. can make it really obvious. Eh. So there. Kind of fades in our warbling. That's a little too much for me. Um, So once again, let's make it fade in a little faster. We can either change it so it doesn't saturate so much or change the decay amount. I think I don't want it to saturate so much. So. There you can do some wacky wild effects using the infamous envelope follower and I hope this is just the beginning. Of course you do have control over your MIDI channel and uh, which CC it will be sending over. And it's nice in Carla you just open up the generic GUI and here you set the CC number. So right now we have it, well, if I set control number to five, then I just change this parameter to Five, and once again, I'm controlling it. And channel one matches up with channel one, which is convenient. And yeah, so just for fun, we can play with another parameter. Let's play with maybe the rate. Uh, let's turn this one off. So now we've got our course on all the time. So now let's set this guy to, what were we, CC5? See a mouse over will display what the value is. Um, five. So maybe I want it to saturate just a little more. 
so that we get more of the clean tone before it starts going crazy. Maybe lower my decay time even. So there you can see, you can have a lot of fun with this. So that's our infamous plugin for the day. You've been officially introduced. Now go, be creative together, do wonderful things. You can find them, of course, at our website at infamousplugins.sourceforge.net. Beautiful. Um, you can go to the download page to learn all about it. And of course, actually at the time of this filming, we are still not released with our GUIs. So feel free to make a contribution. You can read the details here in our donate page. Anyway, I don't want to be a beggar, a bum, or a smelly person. I don't know how that relates, but have a good night. Thank you for watching and enjoy those infamous plugins. They are, oh, I should before I go, they are available right now currently just without the GUI. So if you want to use it right now, you have to look at it like this. Where's our infamous? So you just, here's your output. So you can see this is like the blue and this is the green. And you can edit your parameters here. So anyway, it's free, open source, fully functional, and this GUI here will be as well very soon, I'm sure. But we're just trying to support ourselves a little more. Anyway, enough of that begging nonsense. Okay, have a good night.